Hello scholars, welcome. Mr. Hinkle here and today we're going to talk about faults and folds. This is a brief introduction into what could be more broadly categorized as geological structures. So this is the amazing earth surface features that we see. Wow, look at those cool rock layers. What are they doing? They're all gnarled and mangled and bent all around each other, kind of like this great outcrop that we see here. This is a road cut on Highway, 5, uh, Highway 14 in California on the way out to the Palm Desert. Uh, thank you to the engineers that decided they need to cut through this mountain so that we could see all these amazing folds and faults that were created in Earth's crust. So what we're doing today is we're going to introduce geologic structures. I think I did that. Discuss types of deformation. I'll introduce what that word means. And then connect structures to tectonic setting, to the regional stresses that are creating them. So faults and folds are geologic structures that are created the result of deformation in Earth's crust. And deformation is going to be the change in shape of rocks. We'll get more into that. They're crucial for shaping Earth's surface and they really help geologists understand the structure of our Earth and allow the geologist to recreate, to understand the geologic history of an area. And they're cool. Look at these rock layers. They go down and then sharp bend and up and then sharp bend and down and then sharp bend and up and then sharp bend and down and then a little wavy bend over. How amazing is that? I love geology. So, in order for rock layers to have geologic structures, they must undergo a pressure or a force. And the force is going to be called stress when that force results in the movement, the movement is strain. So two words here, stress, which equals force over an area, and then strain is the movement in result, the physical change in result, in response to the stress. So in an otherwise undeformed sequence of rocks, where the oldest rocks are on the bottom, youngest rocks are on the top, originally horizontal, laterally continuous, all of our principles of stratigraphy apply. There needs to be a force placed on these rocks, and then when that force causes a change, a resulting movement, then we have stress and strain. These are associated with plate tectonic boundaries. And so if we do our hand waving, divergent, convergent, and transform. These are the regional stresses. So we have divergent tension, convergent compression, and transform shear stress. These are going to give us a very specific type of movement or strain, tension, stressing, stretching and thinning, compression, shortening and thickening, shear, tearing, which gives us different types of breaks in the rock called faults and different types of bends in the rock when there's enough heat and pressure associated. Here we can see tension, compression, and shear. Essentially, we have regional tectonic forces acting on Earth's crust at, diverge, uh, at plate tectonic boundaries, and they result in geologic structures. Cool. So another word for strain is deformation, maybe a little bit more commonly used. 
Uh, it's the changes in shape due to a stress. And, oh, here we can see our tectonic forces. One more time, this is really good. Divergent tension, convergent compression, transform shear. This leads us to three specific types of deformation. There's the movement that can reverse back to its original shape. This is elastic deformation. There's movement that results in the rocks breaking. That is called brittle. We'll say reverse to OG. And then we have ductile, or another word for this is plastic. And this is when the rocks bend. So three types of deformation. A stress is applied. The strain is the movement, also known as deformation. If the rocks move and then the stress is released, they go back to their shape. Or the stress is released because the rocks break, brittle deformation, or the stress is released because the rocks bend Ductile deformation. Okay, so I'm one slide ahead. I'm just ahead of myself today. So strain that is reversible after a stress is released. Great review. Brittle occurs when a rock cannot accommodate stress and breaks. Ductile occurs when a rock accommodates stress by flowing instead of breaking. So what we get now with our types of deformation are geologic structures. We get folds when the rocks bend. And in order for this to happen, there needs to be compression. And there has to be the agents of metamorphism that aren't actually changing the rock, but there are high pressures and high temperatures that allow the rock to flow instead of breaking, giving us here is a Jeep for scale. Amazing rock layers. Look at these rock layers. So rocks are laid down originally horizontal, which means that at some time, so here's time one, at some time, these same layers were all subject to ductile deformation that changed the shape from flat to bent. And we call this a geologic fold. More on these in my geologic folds lecture. And if the rocks don't bend, they break instead. Now we're talking about brittle deformation and the resulting geologic structure are faults. As shown here, where you have red rock and this white beige rock, and a contact between the two of them. It's at an angle. This is a fault plane. So originally horizontal, laterally continuous, you would not see the lighter rock punctuated by the red rock. So that means that this rock must have been much further down, and then this is a fault. Somewhere in Earth's crust, due to compressive forces, or tensional forces. The rock broke and was displaced, resulting in brittle deformation and placing the lighter rock next to the red rock. So these are our two most common types of geologic structures. We have plate tectonics, the idea that the surface of Earth, Earth's crust, is covered by large, rigid tectonic plates, and they move around relative to one another where they meet as tectonic boundaries. This creates various types of tectonic stress on crustal rocks. Now, we can have compression, tension, or shear forces that, when they result in the rocks changing their original shape, we get deformation. Elastic if they go back, brittle if they break, giving us faults, and ductile if the rocks bend, giving us faults. Thank you so much.
I'll see you again.